Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you. It is uh, quite a day today. Quite a day. I'm a little emotional today, too. I've got to be honest with you. It's just kind of kind of fragile right now. Um, just been humbled, humbled by the, the research I did this week, the study I did this week, and about God coming as a human. It's just uh, it's very humbling, and I'll share some of that with you today. But we are in the series called Expect the Unexpected, and the first message that we had was God will show up. Did he show up? Yeah, he did. He showed up in the lives of 4,100 people who came through here in four hours. That's not bad. Oh, he showed up. He showed up in the 10-year-old boy who now wants to get baptized. He showed up in the countless number of people who got strengthened in their faith, and some came to faith. He showed up. Our second message was God will be lifted up. Expect the unexpected. Was he lifted up? Yeah, he was lifted up. Y'all lifted him up through follow the star in countless other ways. Wherever you go in the community, wherever you go, when people um, look at your shirt and you see follow the star, your sweatshirt, your hoodie, or they see your beard and wonder why you have it or don't have it, you get to talk, right? Live a life that begs the question. It's a great opportunity. You know what's so cool about follow the star? You get to lift up Jesus just by telling the story. Oh, let me tell you what's, what follow the star is all about. There you go. Testify, witness to Jesus Christ. Well, today, the subtitle of Expect the Unexpected is God says, Listen up. And the examples today that, that God is giving us of people who did just that are Mary and Joseph. All right, we're going we're gonna to go through that. Let's start with Mary. Can you even imagine? what it would have been like to have an angel appear to you, speak to you, and tell you something that's going to happen to you that you know up here is absolutely impossible. Greetings, favorite woman. The Lord is with you. Don't be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the baby to be born will be holy and will be called the Son of God. For the Word of God will never fail. <laughs> well, that was unexpected. <laughs> that was quite an angel. Maybe that's what it was like. I don't know. I'm not sure I want to know. What an incredible announcement he made to Mary. What an incredible reception of that from her and how she handled that. These words really get to me. He said a lot. They said, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. That was his answer to her question. But I'm a virgin. How can I have a child? You know what I find most interesting about, about this particular event? When the Lord, the angel himself came to Mary? Is that the angel does not ask Mary a question. He just tells her. Think about that. He didn't say, hey Mary, I got a question for you. Would you like to consider birthing the Son of God? And bringing on you a whole ton of angst from your community, your family, your friends, because they're going to think you're crazy. <coughs> Would you like to do that, Mary? Didn't ask the question. He just said, this is what you're going to do. God doesn't ask. He tells. In effect, God is saying, shut up. Listen to me. Listen to me. Stop your brain. I gotta work so hard at that. I got a sign in my backyard that says that. Dear brain, please shut up. Because <laughs> sometimes it just keeps going. It's hard to hear. It's hard to listen. In a more polite way, in the transfiguration of Jesus, you know what God, the voice of God from heaven says there? This is my son whom I love. In him I am well pleased. Listen. 
to him. I'll tell you what, though. I don't know if I could have stood there before that angel and, 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 and listened. I don't, in fact, I'm not so sure Mary was able to either, by the way. Um, um, because she gets told this incredible, incredible pronouncement that she's going to give birth to the Messiah, that he is in the line of David, and his kingdom will never end. And his, her first question is, wait a minute, I'm a virgin that does not square with what I know about the birds of the bees. And I brought that up at her staff meeting. I said, I said, you know, it's just kind of interesting that that's where her focus was. There was so much more to that. This huge announcement. And all she could think about was, but that doesn't make sense. That's not how it works. Of course, neither does an angel with the voice of Seth. <laughs> but Chris says, he says, you know what, Pastor? Um, this giving the birth thing was really the first thing out of the mouth of the angel besides fear not, which is necessary. All right? And so, so maybe, you know how it is, sometimes your mind gets stuck on something because it messes with you, and so you can't get past that, and you don't hear the rest of what someone is saying. Has that ever that happened to you? Yeah, absolutely. So I said, you know, that's, that's a really good point. You know, that, that's, that's where her focus was, and it's, and it's understandable too, especially, well, we're going to talk about that, about what that means for her. What that means for her. And it made me think about how we show, follow the star to the community. This is the first scene. The angel to Mary. And the first thing we do on our storyboards and in the, in the programs that we hand out to the people is we ask a question. Here's the question. Did you know an angel from heaven announced to Mary that she would give birth to God's son even though she was still a virgin? And I'm thinking, I wonder how many people walking or driving through this production are absolutely blown away by that question. Absolute nonsense to many of them. I'm not just talking people who don't believe. There's even believers that go, wait a minute, <laughs> that's a little crazy. I'll take a savior, I'm not sure, from the virgin. That's the first question. And then, hopefully, they don't stop there, but they continue to read, because we use some other scripture as a proof text. The prophet Isaiah told of this event hundreds of years before his birth, and in Isaiah 7, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. And then Matthew says, Emmanuel means what? God with us. So we first hit the people with this question out of left field and then these proof texts from the Bible supporting our case. And many of these people, if you think about it, they were just following a light in the sky. They didn't know what they were getting into. They were just following it because somebody is paying to have a big light out there. It must be a big deal. It must be a big event. Maybe there's a great sale going on. And then they get that question. And I'm just hoping they don't stop listening because they need to hear the rest of the story. They need to hear the rest of the story. I'll never forget, and I don't remember the year, 1998, 2000 in California, follow the star. A group of young men in a car followed that light in the sky. And they were doing fine until they hit Pilate. And when they rounded that corner and saw Jesus on the cross, they literally freaked out. They freaked out. They started screaming. They had tried to turn the car around. They would have hurt, maybe killed all kinds of people. All of the soldiers, all the characters that were there, myself included, we ran and said, no, you have to keep going. You have to hear the rest of the story, whether you want to or not. <laughs> And so they did. We never know exactly who God is going to bring through. A production like Follow Star. We never know who God brings here to worship. Who God is having watch on live stream. We never know exactly. But what we do know and trust is that when we use God's word, when we use the Bible and we treat it as God's word because that's what we believe here. It is the inspired word of God. We trust that that's where the power is. And it will not return void. It will not return empty. Isaiah 55, 11, God himself tells us that. We trust that. And when people hear it, I mean really hear it, let their guard down, maybe get over the pride of it, get some humility, and really listen, <coughs> their life will change. Their life will change. Sure did Mary's. Her life changed. 
and it can certainly change ours as well. I want you to try something today. Um, this is what I've been doing all week, so I want you to kind of join me in doing this, all right? Put yourself in Mary's shoes, just for a moment. Try to just think about that moment, that angel coming to her like that, telling her what he told her. And after he had spoken to her, what do you think was going through her mind? Do you think she had hope that maybe this is all going to work out? You think so? I'm sure she had all kinds of hope. I'm, I'm sure she maybe was hoping that her fiancé wouldn't find out. <laughs> that her parents wouldn't disown her. That the people in the town wouldn't stone her. Maybe she was hoping that the angel was talking to the wrong girl. <laughs> just picked the wrong one. Or maybe she was hoping this was just a dream. Because she knew what was going to take place. Or on the other hand, do you think it was easier in 4 B.C. to accept this kind of thing? You, you, you think in the year 4 B.C., you know, that it was just easier to accept that babies come from God through virgins? You know, it's no different today than it was then. They, they didn't operate on a different, you know, level of logic. It wasn't any more normal in 4 B.C. than it is now for a virgin woman to conceive. It was no more normal in 4 B.C. than it is now for an angel to announce that she'll be giving birth to the Savior of the world. <laughs> that you will bear the Messiah and raise him up. <laughs> it wasn't any more normal in 4 B.C. than it is now for a woman to be told that God would father her child. God would. Mary must have had a few questions, don't you think? But regardless of the situation that she's in, regardless how frightened or maybe even hopeless she felt now and then, when she thought about the ramifications of her being pregnant and unmarried, <laughs> when she thinks about going to Joseph, say, hey, Joseph, guess what? I'm pregnant. Sorry it's not you, but it's not any other human being either. And then she had to tell his parents, her parents, all the friends, all the neighbors, that's what she had to do. Like they were going to buy it. The Bible doesn't record anything about that. <laughs> Regardless of all that, Mary trusted. She trusted. She trusted that that was an angel of God and he was speaking the truth. And she had a job to do. But she was chosen. She was favored by God for this. <coughs> what gave her that conviction? Well, I'm sure the work of the Holy Spirit in here, but I think primarily because she listened. She trusted the word. I don't know how. I, I really don't. You know, she didn't run off screaming like I probably would have. But she stayed there, had a conversation with the angel. And after being told that she's going to have a child, the Messiah, and, and God is the father, listen to what she says. This is so, this is so cool. I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me as you have said. Take my life and just turn it upside down, God. I am your servant. May it be to me as you have said. When was the last time you said that? Maybe not in those words, but when was the last time you just got in your knees and you said, all right, God, I give up, man. You own me. You use me however you want. Because you know how, you know better. That's what Mary did. She listened. You ever see the movie The Santa Claus? You ever see the movie with Tim Allen? Raise your hand, yeah. I just want to see it. I'm not how many of you like watch it like ten times? I've seen it. It's just one of those things you could watch again and again and again. Yeah. Um, so for those of you who don't know, it's about a man um, who becomes Santa Claus because the real Santa Claus was delivering presents to his house. He was on the roof, he fell off, and he died. So Tim Allen goes out there and finds a card in his, in, in his suit that says, um, if, you, if you put on the suit, you become Santa. Well, of course. And uh, so he puts it on, and voila, he's Santa. Okay, you have to suspend your disbelief for just a moment for this story. Just like you have to for the story of the angel of Mary. Well, this Tim Allen, 
He doesn't really believe he actually becomes Santa, not in this first uh, movie. He thinks it's just a dream. And after he and his son deliver toys all over the world, the sleigh kicks in at supersonic speed to get him home, and you hear him screaming out, when I wake up, I'm getting a CAT scan. <laughs> That story actually makes me think of this story. It does. Don't you think Mary must have asked herself, am I dreaming? Did I really experience this? Why me? Do you really have the right one? We don't know for sure about that. All we know is she listened. And, and not, not just them, but she kept on listening. Because because when you look in, in, in Luke 2, it tells us that Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. I ponder them too. That's not a word we use very often today. But it would be uh, uh, synonymous. So where synonyms would be reflect or meditate or consider carefully. That's what she did. If, if only we could do that well, huh? <laughs> if only we could... Slow down, be still, and listen to God. It's one of the hardest things to do. It is for me. It's hard to do, to just listen. Then it was from an angel. Today, we get God's word from his Bible. And he says, open it, and read it, and ponder it, reflect on it, meditate on it. Consider very carefully what God is saying to you in your life through his word here. Listen. Listen to him. This is how he speaks to us today. And this is what God uses to give us hope. I can't wrap my mind around this event. Never will be able to. I can't even imagine what it would be like to be Mary. Or Joseph, for that matter. We forgot about Joseph. I mean, think about Joseph. How many of you ever thought what it would be like to be Joseph? I go, really, Mary? So you're pregnant. I'm not the dad. I know that. But no other man's involved but God. Really. And if I don't accept that, then I'm going to have to let the people in the town stone you or divorce you quietly. That's what he was thinking. See, they weren't married yet, they were engaged, but that was, in those days that was tantamount to marriage. And tough decision. Had to be. Had to be just really, really hard. But then, Joseph had an angel too. And what both Mary and Joseph did was listen. Mary to the angel who was up close and personal, and Joseph to the angel that came to him in a dream and said these words, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She'll give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus, Yeshua, because he will save his people from their sins. And that dream must have been so real for him. Because when Joseph wakes up, he does as the angel commands. And no, the angel, again, didn't ask. He just spoke in a way that said, hey, Joseph, listen up. And so Joseph did. Now, like I said, I, I don't know how with this angel, this pronouncement, both Joseph and Mary handled it. But what I do know is that regardless of, of all the spectacular and, 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 and miraculous and, and the completely unexpected events that were going on in the lives right now, there's something very real that God wants us to know through this story, that God wants us to hear, to listen to in our lives. God, the creator of the universe, took on human form so he could be our substitute. He could take our place in two ways especially. He could live the life that we couldn't. Because being holy, being perfect is what is required to be in the presence of God. He had no sin. He was born without sin. And he kept it that way. And then he did for us what he didn't want us to do. 
and that was to sacrifice our lives because the wages of sin is death. Instead, he took on our sin. He became sin for us and went to that cross and was forsaken by his father. And he experienced hell so you and I would never have to. That's what he did. That's love. And that, that reality, that reality that God took on human form in the person of Jesus, from a, from a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger to a man dressed in, in rags and dying on a cross, is very hard for us to, to grasp. It's very hard for us to, to, to really get it, but it's true. I don't get it up here, but I know it in here. And, and, and Jesus was completely and fully divine. God. But just as important, he was completely and fully human. Had to be. And both of those natures had to go through. I wish I could explain it. <laughs> but I can't. I could only share God's word with you. In some other words, from someone else who has the gift of communicating the mysteries of God in a way that I can't. He's an author, Max Licato. And um, he works hard at communicating this mystery that we're talking about today. In his book, God Came Near, there's a chapter there that's titled 25 Questions for Mary. He asked some pretty thought-provoking questions here. I just want to share them with you. Some of them. Mary, what was it like watching Jesus pray? Mary, how did he respond when he saw other kids giggling during the service at the synagogue? Mary, when he saw a rainbow, did he ever mention a flood? Did you ever feel awkward teaching him how he created the world? When he saw a lamb being led to the slaughter, did he act differently? Isaiah 53. Did the thought ever occur to you, Mary, that the God to whom you were praying was asleep under your own roof? Did you ever try to count the stars with him and succeed? <laughs> when someone referred to Satan, how did he act? Did his other brothers and sisters understand what was happening? And Mary, did you ever think that is God eating my soup. <clears throat> now I know some of these questions are sound a bit odd and irreverent. They are. And some of these questions certainly wouldn't stand up under a doctrinal litmus test, but that's not why they were written. Lucado wrote them to help us, to give us a God in Jesus Christ that we can touch and see and feel and hear and smell, and experience so that we can grow in our relationship with him. We can relate to who he is. Because after all, Jesus wasn't only God. He was a man. And he was fully human. He had to be. To be our substitute on that cross and from that grave. And one of my favorite descriptions that Lakedu writes of God becoming flesh. A baby in the womb of Mary. To help us grasp the reality of this mystery, or maybe it's just going to confound and confuse it even more, I'm not sure, but I want to read you this description. The omnipotent, all powerful. The omnipotent in one instant made himself breakable. He who had been spirit became pierceable. He who was larger than the universe became an embryo. And he who sustains the world with the word chose to be dependent upon the nourishment of a young girl. God is a fetus. Holiness. Sleeping in a womb. The creator of life being created. God was given eyebrows, elbows, two kidneys and a spleen. He stretched against the walls and floated in the amniotic fluids of his mother. God came near. 
God did all that he did to come near you. He came to you and me so that we would be compelled to let him touch us, our lives, with his love and his forgiveness and his promise of eternal life. That's what this is all about. And I don't know why. Especially why me. I don't know why. And I certainly don't know how. But I do know What's a mystery in here is a reality that will be revealed in all its majesty and all its glory when our time is done here. But until that time, just like Mary, we got work to do. We have a life gifted to us by God to live for him, to live our lives in such a way that God will use us our works to connect more people to Jesus Christ so that they won't get it either but they'll know it they'll just know it because there's only one savior of this world and that's Jesus Christ we got a job to do and we can only do that job well when we take the time to listen to listen. And the more we do, the more you can expect the unexpected. Because it will happen. And it will give glory to God. In Jesus' name.